there and welcome to another edition of The Teaching Lady. Today we're in the bathroom. Well, to my surprise I had a slab leak. And when you have a slab leak, in my case, I had to repipe the whole house. Now I didn't personally do it. I hired some great plumbers to do the job and they got the job done pretty quickly. But I decided since my daughter's bathtub had been worn, it was almost 30 years old, that it was time to change it out. Well, when you do that, of course, you end up with this because you have to take the walls down in order to do that. So today I'm starting the process of starting to put those walls back up. We got the new tub in and now I'm going to start putting the walls back up. Now one thing that I learned in this process is there's a thing called Hardy Backer Board that is the newest rave and everybody is using it or so they say. I've tried a piece of it and I'm going to put a second piece up here but honestly I'm not a fan of it because trying to handle it by myself it's a little heavy, it's fragile, and it creates uh, silica dust when you cut it, which is not the best. I mean, even though we should be wearing masks anyway when we cut things. But I'm gonna go back to what I know, which is green board. Uh, it's drywall with a green facing on it, and I'm gonna use that for the two walls. Now, some people might go, oh, you're mixing the two. Yeah, I am. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do this time that I didn't do with my shower 15 years ago, and that's water coat, waterproof all of the finish here before I put the tile on. And so I bought a product called Red Guard, and I'm gonna apply that to the green, green board as well as the hardy back board and waterproof it to prevent uh, any further issues. Then I'll go and apply the tile. Now, uh, just a disclosure here for you, I've never actually tiled a wall. I've done tons of floor tile in my lifetime, but I've never actually tiled a wall before, a bathroom. So this is going to be my first go around of trying to tile a wall. So I'm going to go really slow in that process. One of the things that's helped me is watching a couple of people on YouTube that are tile professionals. And I've learned a lot in just the tips and tricks and things to uh, do when tiling a bathroom wall, how to start, where to start. And one of the things that they show is waterproofing uh, what you're going to put the tile on before you start tiling. So I'm in that process. Right now what I have to do, I don't know if you can see it, but the drywall that came down, I need to put some support studs back here to... Uh, have to be able to screw the new drywall to uh, since that drywall when they first made this house apparently they took normal drywall and they just ran it all the way to the corner they didn't even have green board in here when I took the old drywall out and that lasted 30 years and there was very little mold on that drywall. Very little. Actually, I didn't even have a space where I had to fix that. So that regular drywall worked out really good. The tile, whoever did the tile job did a great job. But I've got to go back in now and line up this green board to make it even with the regular drywall and then tape it off, mud it accordingly, and then waterproof it. So I'm going to get to doing that. took the tub out, we found an old beer bottle, Bush Beer from 1988. We now have PEX pipe installed in the walls. Alright, so we got the second piece of hardy board in. Let me tell you something. You might probably wonder why I got one blue glove on. The guy at the big box store told me you know, a fast way to cut this would be to use a jigsaw, but use a fine blade. 
because it would generate a lot of dust if you don't use a fine blade. Well, let me tell you what happens when you use a fine blade. The blade gets so hot that when you go to adjust the board and you accidentally touch the blade, it takes the first layer of skin off your finger like that. So this finger right here in this section is covered right now with two band-aids and ointment because it took the first layer of skin right off. It burned it just like boom, it was gone. The blade was so hot on the jigsaw when I went to adjust the board to make sure it wasn't hitting the wood underneath, torched my finger. So of course I come in and take care of it and medicate it and everything. And then I'm like, forget the fine cut. I'm just gonna put my, keep my mask on, put a thing over my head, hold my breath, use a rough cut uh, jigsaw blade and just right on through, hold my breath for 30 seconds and run in the house so I don't inhale any silica dust. Forget using a fine blade on the jigsaw. I like burn the tip of my finger off. So there's probably a better way to cut that stuff. But me personally, I'm not using that again because I'm not fit to use that. I'm just going to go back to what I know, which is the green board. And I figure, you know, 20 years from now, if it fails, I'm, I might be in a home for all I know. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, a little uh, word of advice. Well, we are now ready for the drywall mud. So I picked up some mud. Picked up a cheap scraper. I mean, I'm going to use it a couple of times and then might you have it for future. And I got some drywall tape. And essentially, what we're going to do is cover the seams. Now, some people on this hardy backboard would use uh, what they call a concrete fill. Um, I have one seam and then I have green board. If you could see that for the rest of it. So I'm using the stuff that I know how to use. And uh, to give you an update on my finger burn, there it is. Whoop, there it is. That, if you recall, was from the saw blade on the jigsaw. So, warning to you, after you've been using the jigsaw, trying to cut that or even anything else, the blade is hot from going up and down, up and down, up and down. A thousand revolutions. And it's like sticking your hand inside the oven and touching the rack same deal but my neighbor who's a doctor has looked at it says it's healing good um so i'm i'm happy so we're going to go ahead and get started lining uh the seams with tape and mud in preparation for tile well first we're going to do waterproofing and then tile Red Guard has been applied to the surface, and now it's time to lay out the tile. Now it's time to see how the tile will lay on the wall. Where will the pieces end up, and what kind of cuts will I have to make? It's important that you get an idea of how the tile will lay on the wall, because you don't want a tiny strip at the top or the bottom. Since I've never tiled a bathroom wall before, the plumber suggested I use wood furring strip to run my first row of tile and then come back and do the bottom row. A laser level comes in handy when putting up the furring strips to start your first row of tile because the bathtub is not always level. As you can see, we have the first tiles installed. Made sure that they were level as well as using the spacers. The spacers with the orange brackets come in very handy with wall tile, helping keep those tiles in place and even and level. We continue to move the tile upward, installing full pieces first and then we'll do the cut pieces piece of wood is working out great as a stabilizer for this heavy tile. The tiles being installed are 16 by 16 
with an accent tile to break up the space. What I'm doing is working up and around, working all whole tiles, and then I'll do my cuts. Now it's time for the hardest cut of all, going around the plumbing. I used the tile saw for going around the valve, and I used a diamond drill bit to go around the pipe. I was so happy that cut came out on the first try. I mean to tell you, that took some doing, but with the right tools, you can do it. All the tiles been installed, and now it's time to grout. Yippee! My least favorite part. Now the grouting is complete but I have noticed that there are some gray blotches on every tile that has been cut. I went to the tile store and spoke to them and they could not tell me what caused it. It's especially noticeable around the valve. As you can see, on each tile you see gray blotches and I was very disappointed. The tile store suggested that I wait a few weeks and see if it dries out as they had never seen anything like it. Well, I did exactly that. I waited. And now the bathtub is ready for use. I waited a few weeks to see if the gray blotches would go away, and sure enough, they finally did after week number four. We are delighted with the way the bathtub turned out. Thank you for watching and join us again sometime. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe today.